Salt marsh and intertidal mudflats are important not just for this country but internationally as well and we're losing them around the European coasts and in particular on the east coast here uh, where we've got a lot of salt marsh and intertidal areas they're gradually being eroded as sea level rises and we've got sea defences which stop them rolling in land effectively which is what they do naturally. We farm here on the Shotley Peninsula arable and grassland but we have diversified on the farm. We started with bed and breakfast a number of years ago and we have planning permission to convert a farmyard for self-catering holiday units. Uh, we've actually converted three buildings so far and they opened last year and so far we're very pleased with the results. I think diversification is very important and it's one of the reasons behind the uh, change of attitude to the use of the marshes uh, where cattle were essential to us at one point um, they're not now and I believe there are tourism possibilities with the potential flooding of the marshland under uh, coastal change. So what we're trying to do here is repeat something that nature would do by removing the defences. We're allowing a space for those intertidal habitats to recreate, which is good for the landowner here who's interested in that for his tourism business. But it's also good for, for us and for the public and the wider environment as we create a new intertidal area that's also good for flood risk management as well. The marshland down here was enclosed before any of the Ordnance Survey maps were made. But Clearly these were saltings into tidal habitat at one point in the past and as recently as 1953 there is a mark actually on the buildings here that the height of the 53 floods came to so we would all be either in a boat or underwater at this moment. So I don't consider that it is changing the habitat too much to allow this to be flooded because it is going back to an era when it was part of the estuary rather than part of the productive farm. This project here is really good for the estuary because it provides extra habitats for birds and invertebrates but also provides more room for water. When the two breaches are engineered on this defence here, they'll be at the a correct width that's wide enough so the water can move onto site really slowly and quite naturally, as you would see on a normal shore. The sort of birds that will benefit from this managed realignment are oyster catcher, dunlin, and also the Brent geese. Richard currently accesses funding through the High Level Stewardship Scheme, which is an environmental project that Natural England uses to allow farmers to make use of their farmland but also set aside areas for environmental projects. Through this managed realignment Richard will also be able to access funding that will enable him to allow this scheme to go ahead but also viably continue to use his farm. So we are in constructive talks with the Environment Agency and Natural England about the change of use from grazing to intertidal habitat we will lose, obviously, all the grazing marsh. We will lose some of the skirt arable land and some of the woodland that's visible along behind us. But probably there will be replanting to be done of the woodland and we will hope to create a, an interesting habitat on the rest of the area. The scheme involves moving a really important public footpath, so we really need to work with local people to find a new place for the footpath when the site is inundated, so that they can enjoy the estuary and the estuary views at the weekends while they're taking their dogs for a walk. Well, at the NFU we're primarily interested in food production and how we can ensure that we improve our national food security. So our interest is in making sure that as many of our seawalls as possible are well and adequately maintained so that we can protect the land behind those seawalls that grow our food. But of course there are exceptions and this is a good example of the way in which um, farmers, in this case Richard and Hazel, can look at the farm as a whole and identify the best areas to grow food, look at areas in which the public's need for access and recreation is satisfied and where they can improve the environment uh, that surrounds their farm. I actually see the, the change of use as uh, an advantage to us in terms of tourism. I believe it has the potential to bring more bird watchers, more walkers and probably cyclists 
into the area. Uh, there are longer term potentials in that I have started looking at the possibility of creating salt marsh grazed lamb down here. Now obviously to establish salt grassland is several years down the road. It's not going to happen just after you pull the plug and, and flood them. But I, I believe there are diversification opportunities that will help the farm long term and the tourism business. Uh, so I see it as, a, as an interesting challenge, not something that I am going to lose 100 acres of land. This is a really exciting project and we're really happy to be working with Richard, uh, the Environment Agency and the NFU on this project. And we are really keen that in the future Natural England can engage with farmers on projects like this so that we can all work together to ensure farmers and landowners can continue to run their farms in a way that is good for them as well as for us. And I think it's a fantastic opportunity we've got here that Richard, whose family have farmed this land for the last hundred years, is looking forward and planning the future of this farming business for the next century.